can't even open my eyes right now. This is how bad the snow is coming down, and it's thanks to weather like this that those roads are not being fixed. Police say the man came to the bank with a note demanding money from the teller. Doors to the Villa Chapel remain locked to the public. However, the group is trying to change that moving forward. And if you could take a look right now behind me, there is quite a bit of damage. Because this intersection is known to be so unsafe, he's found ways to make sure that he and his family remain safe. This wreath was laid here at our 9-11 Memorial. Fans of Rascal Flats and the band Perry say they are so excited to have these big name acts make their way to the Erie Insurance Arena. You really can't go wrong by coming down to celebrate Erie. That's good. Standing with his hands covering his face, trying to hold back and shield his emotions, Harold Stabline is a man in mourning. He's my big brother. He taught me so many things in life. Uh, it's, it's hard. It's just really hard. We're very close. His brother William died less than a day after being struck by an SUV on East 38th Street last week. Now, Harold is left to cherish the memories of his big brother, who he describes as a Christian with a big heart, who loved riding his bike. He was riding bikes before bikers were, you know, in Erie were heard of. You know, that wasn't many bikers, you know, now there is. But Harold is also now left to do something else, to raise awareness about motorcycle safety so that no other family has to feel what he's feeling. Please, please, I beg people, please be, be aware. It's not, it's not worth it. His message was shared with those at the blessing of the bikes, and as dozens and dozens of bikers took part in this tradition, those who organized it say there's a real need for this kind of spiritual end to roar on the shore. We need all the protection we can get when we're riding, and the rider and, and the bike are a unit, and so if you bless the bike and you bless the rider, then we need all of God's blessings that we can get. That's, there's no doubt about that. September 4th will be a day parents Sarah and Jason O'Neill will never forget. We said goodnight to her. She said she was going to take a shower. And uh, when we woke up the next morning, uh, we wake up pretty early. We uh, heard the shower water still running. Eldest daughter Alyssa, a former McDowell cheerleader and a freshman at Penn State Barron who was studying to become a nurse, died following a parent seizure. She was only 18. Alyssa was diagnosed with epilepsy in January 2012, a disorder that can be hereditary but also developed in other ways. You can also develop it after like a, if you get hit in the head really hard, uh, multiple concussions, um, high fever spikes. To raise awareness about this disorder and help their daughter's memory live on, the O'Neills have started a social media campaign that is taking the world by storm. With support from the community and people from all around the world, the O'Neills are finding creative ways to make sure their daughter's memory lives on. Hashtag AJO. It's tattooed on her parents' wrists, visible all across the internet and all over Starbucks cups around the world. The day before she died, she told her mother she wanted to try a pumpkin spice latte. If she didn't get a chance to have one, I want someone else to enjoy it. So her parents paid for some lattes to donate to anyone who ordered one and asked Starbucks workers to write hashtag AJO on the cups. Starbucks tripled that donation and now people as far away as Australia are part of this epilepsy awareness movement and now know Alyssa's story, a story about a girl with a big heart who is gone too soon. She was the most positive person. She made everybody smile. She was, she was fantastic. We, we really loved her. The Crawford County Fair is a staple in northwestern Pennsylvania, something everyone should experience, including me. I call myself a city girl, and I've never been to a county fair before. And boy, was I pleasantly surprised. Right from the gate, I ditched the high heels and put on something a little more appropriate. Too bad I didn't have a pair of cowboy boots, at least this time. First stop was food. Beautiful, great, delicious. I had a delicious gyro, but if you want something a little sweeter, oh, the fair has you covered. All deep fried things. We have elephant ears and funnel cakes are the, you know, number one. But now we do the cookie dough, cookies, candy. Next stop was the games and ride section. I took a few shots, but let's leave the sports to the professionals. So I guess basketball is not my strong suit. I think I better stick to reporting. And finally, I got to check out the animals, something I don't see too often back at home in New Jersey. I met a girl who's showing cows at the fair and has been doing it since she was a little kid. Since I was little, about one, so my parents were in the farming and showing cows. So that covers all my bases. I ate, 
too much, played a few games, pet a cow, and met Mr. Cluck, a tradition started a few years ago by a mom to help her autistic son become more outgoing. My son is autistic, and so we found out that in a chicken suit, he is not shy and he can approach people and doesn't have to talk. And I think that was a pretty awesome first time fair experience for this city girl.